It seems like it always stands out to me that that part about I was a prisoner. Now I'm not. Father, we are so grateful that we're not prisoners any longer, but, uh, but greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Thank you that I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me, who strengthens me. And we are grateful that we're no longer prisoners. Uh, we've been set free. So hallelujah to Jesus. Thank you, band. Thank you, Pablo, Pastor Nance. Amen. Pastor Nancy, you want to come up and read your prayer? Uh, Pastor wrote a beautiful prayer today. Uh, there's trouble in the city, and I don't know where you're at if uh, obviously those of you that are with us are here, but others are not, but we've had some issues in our city, and uh, she wrote a beautiful prayer, so I pray that uh, you'll receive this prayer today and agree with us in Jesus' name. Just curious how many of you saw the email this afternoon, a few of you. Um, so... We were made aware of, you know, there has been a spike in crime in our city. Uh, but as you are probably aware, Pastor Steve and I don't watch the news very much anymore. Anymore. And so um, we had missed uh, some of the tragic things that happened over the weekend. Uh, there were some children, several caught in different instances, but caught in the crossfire of, of just gang activity, gunfire. And it's just a reminder that we have people in our church that live in these communities. And uh, I actually had a tenant email me today. She lives in Robbinsdale, right on the border of North Minneapolis and Robbinsdale, fairly close to North Memorial Hospital. And she said she's lived there for 30 years. And never has she heard so much gunfire and sirens. She said it's almost nonstop. And so I just had a really heavy heart after I heard about what's going on with the kids and just was praying and so felt led to send out a, an email to the congregation because we need to stand. And we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. We're dealing with spirits of wickedness, and darkness, and we have authority. And as a church that is planted in the heart of our city and with congregation members that live yeah. all around our city, we can take authority and stand together for our neighborhoods to be restored to peace. And so this is the prayer. We'll just pray it. I'm going to read it. Father, in the name of Jesus, we declare and speak your peace now over our city. Now. Now, now over our city in the name of Jesus and every neighborhood in turmoil. We pray for the city leaders and all those in authority to do what is right in your sight. We bind the God of this world off of their minds. And we pray for the fear of the Lord to overwhelm each one of them. We pray for our leaders to come together in unity on behalf of public safety, leaving behind all personal agendas. We are asking for your divine intervention on behalf of the innocent and praying for grace and mercy and healing for those in need. We pray for safety and help for all of the first responders, that they too would experience the fear of the Lord and would walk in your wisdom, doing what is right in your sight. We bind spirits of anger, rage, and murder, and bind the God of this world off of those committing the crimes. We pray for those young people, especially those that are committing the crimes, those that are wrapped up in the gangs. God, we pray for them to come out of darkness and to be radically saved. We pray for godly men and women to cross their paths and to help them get on the right path. We declare a supernatural hedge of protection right now over our brothers and sisters in Christ and declare no weapon formed against any of us will prosper in Jesus' name. We pray for the pastors and Christian leaders in every neighborhood affected to come together in unity and for their voices to be heard. Give them divine wisdom to be solution-oriented, breaking down every barrier and divide of the enemy. We declare according to your word that every tongue that would rise up in judgment against us is condemned and shown to be in the wrong. We declare we are in the right place at the right time, and we thank you, Lord, that your favor surrounds the righteous like a shield. Thank you for hearing our prayers and that as we stand together in agreement according to your word, we can trust that you hear our prayers and answer them in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Oh, wow. 
that is critically important at this time, and we're grateful for praying people, and we pray that we could pray this prayer over and over again. It's so, it's so important for our, our, our city, and uh, again, I just make mention of the fact that in Jeremiah 29, where it says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, thoughts for peace and welfare, yeah. or shalom. Well, right up a couple verses ahead of it, it says, if you pray for your city, then you can ask God and uh, he will uh, make things. Well, I'll just read it really quickly. I mean, it's Jeremiah 29. Jeremiah 29, it says, uh, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then you shall call upon me, and you shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. But up in the uh, earlier verses, it says that if you will, um, for thus says the Lord in, in verse 8, um, Trust me, it's there. I'm not finding it. But it's there. Anybody see it? Eleven, no, I know that one. That's uh, that's where we were. If you will. All right, we're moving on. I couldn't find it in my own Bible. <laughs> Sorry, Father, in Jesus' name, forgive me for wasting time. I thank you for the saints that are assembled here together, Lord. We just pray over our time. We thank you for your time and your people and the Word of God and the wonderful worship and singing and praise. So, Lord, we lift up the, this word now in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, last week we started talking about taking the limits off. This is part two. And in Ephesians 3, 20, it says, Now to him that is able to do, let's, let's read it together, exceedingly, abundantly, above all we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. All right, so we talked last week about what is the power that is work within us, and we talked about the Word of God mixed with faith. Praise God that I, I love to talk about the Word of God mixed with faith. Praise God wants us to add our faith to His Word. But today I want to look at the power of God's Word mixed with love. Everybody say love. Hallelujah. For the love of God, the love of God that has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. All right, so the love of God in our heart by the Holy Spirit who is given to us in Romans chapter 5, verse 5, from the New Living Translation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment, for we know how dearly God loves us. Praise God, we need to stop and just in the midst of everything that's going on, recognizing how much, how dearly God loves us, for God so loved us. I put myself in it. I pray that you put yourself into John 3, 16, for God so loved me that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him, I believe in you. And uh, thank you, Lord, for John 3, 16, shall not perish, but have everlasting life. All right, so this hope is, uh, will not lead to disappointment for we know how much how dearly God loves us because he's given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. Uh, this is a faith point that each of us needs to step out into faith believing that this scripture reveals to us and promises us that the Holy Spirit has been given to fill our hearts with love. You may, uh, you may be from the community that Pastor Nancy just read the prayer for and that at times it might be challenging for you to walk through your community and have love in your heart because you might be challenged, you might be uh, afraid, you might be worried about the things that are going on there, but this says that God has filled your heart with love and therefore we can walk through our city, we can walk through our neighborhood, we can walk through wherever we need to go because God has filled our hearts with the Holy Spirit and our hearts are filled with love and love never fails and, and love conquers all and so we can just trust the Lord for the Holy Spirit's help in our life to fill our hearts with that love. So love is greater than hope and love is greater than faith. Wow, that's amazing. Where do you get that from? 1 Corinthians chapter 13. At the end of the love chapter, the very last verse, it says that uh, now that abides faith, hope, and love, these three, but the greatest of these 
is love. So we know, and from our years and years of study of the subject of love, we know that scripture, the Greek language from the New Testament, uh, the word is agape love. God's kind of love in the Greek language is called agape love. Agape is the love of God that he has towards the human race. And uh, it, God is perfectly love. And sometimes, you know, we question some of the things that happen in our lives, some things that are going on in the streets of our city, some things that are happening downtown. We go through things that we just don't understand, we wonder about, and yet we know that God is, is his love is perfect towards the human race. His love is perfect towards you and I, for God so loved me that he gave his only begotten son. So God's love, his agape love, we are encouraged to put agape love ahead of hope and faith. And that for some of us, that's a challenge because hope is the biggest thing on our agenda. We're hoping and we're praying and we're believing. For others, faith is the biggest thing on our agenda. I want to have faith because we know that faith moves mountains. But Jesus said it, the Word of God says it, faith works by love. Your faith must be activated by the power of love. And so when we say we have faith, when we say we have hope, we are putting love ahead of faith and hope. So every word that we know from the scripture, when we mix it with love, when we mix it with agape, it takes the limits off the love of God in our heart. I want to step up higher in the love of God. I want to walk in the love of God. I want to minister in the love of God. I want people to say when they hear me speak that that, that pastor has love. Hallelujah. Every one of us should want someone to say, that person walks in love. That person has the love of God shed abroad in their heart by the Holy Spirit who's been given to us. All right, so unfortunately, despite the truth of love from Scripture and what, you know, the taking the limits off and now to him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask according to the power of love that is working in us. For most of us, our love walk has been challenged in the last year and a half. I don't think any of us, maybe some of you have been around through some times where it's been as challenging as the last year and a half is. I, we, you know, uh, maybe you were around during 2000 or 2001 or, or, you know, back, some of us go all the way back to, you know, wars that, you know, you, 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 some of you young people <laughs> weren't even around for, hallelujah, that you weren't. But uh, every one of us has been challenged in this last year and a half. And uh, many Christians are experiencing sadness right now. They're, they're isolated. People are still isolating, and they're isolated. And, and I can't help but, you know, wonder uh, if the enemy has tried to isolate us from each other and to uh, take away our hope and to cause us to have feelings of sadness and disappointment and hurt and anger and disillusionment, hurt, anger, disillusionment, hopelessness. It's unfortunate that there's so much hopelessness. And have you had any feelings of powerlessness at times, you know, during this whole experience where, you know, you've been just kind of told what to do, where to stay, where to go, what, where, you know, all these things just have, have been uh, uh, making the, you people feel powerless, leaving them to ask, where is the power of God in our lives? But praise God, it's time. It's time to... You know, forget the stuff that's been going on. We got to take our masks off this week, and we can uh, we can go places and we can do things. And and you know, even even the sporting events are starting to have people come back. So that's a pretty good sign that that things are coming back. And so we pray right now that that everyone would would go back to basics. What is the what are the basics of our Christianity? Numero uno has to be love. It has to be because you know the fruit of the spirit is love and joy, and peace, and long-suffering, and gentleness, and goodness, and faith, and meekness, and temperance. And the scripture says, against such, 
there is no law. But the first thing on the list, going back to the first thing, the fruit of the Spirit is love. Challenging our own love walk, challenging our own lovelessness if we've been in this challenge over this time of feeling sad or disappointed or hurt or angry or disillusioned or hopeless or powerless or or just wondering, where is God in all this? God's love has not changed. He's perfectly perfect in love. I mean, you, you know, I, I was uh, looking at some of the, the misery of the Jews when they, in 70 AD, we talked about it in class on Saturday morning here, this destruction of the city of Jerusalem and the temple and the scattering of, I mean, how would you feel if, you know, you, so they came into our church and they smashed all the chairs and they smashed all the equipment and they, and they, 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 kicked everybody out and they threw people in jail or they killed them or, or they scattered people. I mean, how would you feel? I mean, the misery of having your, your temple, having your place of worship, having your city destroyed with fire and you having to run for your life with nothing to take with you. What a miserable time it would have been. And throughout history, some of the misery that the, the children of Israel, the, the Jewish people have experienced. And, and we just, uh, but for us here, we can come away from any of the pain or suffering or, or the bad times that we've experienced. What my objective here is to grab on to each of us and to take each other by the hand and to lift each other back to a place of hope. That, that we could have some hope that, that we are going to be restored to a place of, of, of a full house again and a place of, of enjoying fellowship and enjoying, you know, slapping each other. In the, you know, I haven't had many hugs in quite some time. You know, I, it's part of it's my own fault because, you know, I've been throwing fist bumps, you know, and stuff. And, but, man, it's going to be good when you can just grab your brother and just give him a giant hug. And, and it's op- we're open to do it now. Amen. And I pray that your brothers are hugging, sisters are hugging, families are hugging. And people are hugging. They're going back to the to the love of God without uh, feeling like you're you're breaking the law or you're feeling like you're you're doing somebody wrong. You know, there are still people that are angry. There are still people that are mad at you if you you know if you, you you're stepping out. But praise God, we're stepping out. Say we're stepping out. We're stepping out in God. Amen. We're taking the limits off of our love walk. Hallelujah. We're going back to basics, the foundation of love, and it, it, we're being challenged uh, again and again. Love challenges us again and again. Till the time we go to heaven, we're going to be challenged by love. And so we're discussing love, we're finding love, and we find different versions of the Bible because the King James says it one way, the New King James says it another way. Amplify, extend it about this long, but the NIV or the NLT today, that's what we're going to look at from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4. Love is patient and kind. Have we checked our love walk as far as our patience and our kindness? Hallelujah. We need to reach out and be patient with our brothers and sisters. Maybe there are still some that are still terrified. There are people that are still terrified. There have been people that have been living in fear all this time. But thank God that you and I know our Savior. We know that if something for, un- for, for some reason that we would, we would uh, you know, catch the, the flu or something and something bad would happen, we know where we're going if we were to pass away. Nobody wants to die. Nobody wants to leave early. But praise God that we know in whom we believed. We trust God and we believe him. So we're, we're going back to the basics of our faith in order to stir ourselves up to get back up on it. Now, I know a lot, most of you, you haven't gotten down off of love. You haven't stopped loving people. You haven't stopped loving your husband or loving your wife or loving your children or loving your family or loving your coworkers or whoever it is. But praise God, we are just checking up on, up our, lo- uh, checking up on our love walk. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4, from the New Living Translation, love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous, or boastful, or proud, or rude. Now, when you look in there, jealous, boastful, proud, or rude, you know, some of us lean different ways in, in, our, in our personalities, you know? And if we allow our personalities to lead us, you know, uh, someone could be a jealous person, another person could be boastful or a braggadocious, another person, you know, one of the biggest challenges in the church is pride. 
Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a, wall, uh, before a fall. We all need to check our hearts for pride. We all need to examine our attitudes for pride because love is patient and kind and not proud, hallelujah, or rude. Uh, I, you know, sometimes we get short, sometimes we're tired, sometimes there are reasons where, why we do certain things, but love is not rude. Everyone say it, love is not rude. Well, I, you know, I think many of us are maybe feeling a little bit checked in our hearts, examining ourselves, you know, if we treated our spouse or our children or, or our neighbors or somebody, maybe we just passed by and we weren't interested in, in fellowship or saying hello or anything like that, but we just have to make sure that love is not rude and, and to stay in that love walk with Jesus. It does, not, it does not demand its own way. My brothers and sisters, can you surrender to somebody else's will. That's a check for every one of us. Love can surrender itself to someone else's will. Even when you're persuaded that you're right, even if you're persuaded that uh, your position that you're taking, you know, we run into a lot of people that are, are very strong and opinionated and they're very confident. And a lot of times they take a position that con uh, contradicts your position. And in your own heart, you might feel that you have peace, that you're right. And yet, sometimes you surrender and allow that person just to stay out of strife, to stay out of uh, uh, confrontation, to stay out of uh, anger or any of those things. And, and you know, sometimes we just are, are uh, not demanding our own way. I think all of us, a lot of times, want it our way. And yet, love does not demand its own way. I think of a relationship in my marriage. Uh, we, obviously, you guys know Pastor Nancy. She's strong-willed. She's a um, powerful woman. zero opinions, ever. You have zero, <laughs> absolutely. You heard it from her. She has zero opinions. So I guess I win every, I, I guess I win every discussion, every argument, and everything it goes my way. Is that correct, ma'am? I would say no, because who yields more? In our marriage, we won't go there and start keeping ta tabs on each side. But I can guarantee you how many times I yield versus how many times she yields. So, but hey, no, we are, we, we learn, we learn. It's going to be pretty comfortable We... Love learns to yield, hallelujah, <laughs> praise God. Even when, you know, even with your boss, I mean, how many times have you been called out by somebody at work when you know, I didn't do that, I didn't make that mistake, I didn't cause that problem, and they're calling you out for it. Sometimes love does not demand its own way. You know, sometimes you got to just not defend yourself. Uh, I... You know, you could really go somewhere with that whole defending yourself, but sometimes you just let it go. I guess you could say love lets it go. Amen. All right, so going on. It does not demand its own way. It's not irritable. Oh, boy, man, some of us, you know what? If you haven't had your breakfast or you haven't had your coffee or you haven't had your vitamins or you haven't had your juice or whatever it is you haven't eaten yet, we could be kind of irritable or if you haven't had your sleep. But love's not irritable. Check ourselves and, you know, we have to judge ourselves. Uh, judge yourselves and you'll not be judged, the Scripture says. It keeps no record of being wronged. Have you been really hurt ever lately sometime in the not too distant past somebody hurt you badly or you were wrong flat out love keeps no record of it and I tell you what that might be the hardest thing about love to look at somebody that flat out dissed you spited you fully used you. Jesus said, pray for those that disuse, spite you, and fully use you, despitefully, that despitefully use you. And there are going to be times where because people know you're a Christian, they're going to think you're weak on purpose. They probably know in the depths of their heart that Christians, it takes more strength to be a Christian than, than is the weakness that they're suggesting that you're weak. 
and yet they'll take advantage. They'll railroad over you. They'll, ro- they'll, they'll, they'll uh, push their way over you because you're professing to be a Christian. And for instance, they know you won't fight. You know, well, some of us might. No, I'm just kidding. But, but so, you know, they, they don't think you'll fight or you'll resist or you'll just uh, be a pushover. And sometimes you just have to let it go and not keep a record of the wrong. And when somebody, somebody offends you, they insult you, I think it's easier to not hold an insult against your faith than it is to not hold, to hold a, an insult against your person. And it should be the other way around, but it's not. And so, you know, it's not irritable. It keeps no record of being wronged, lets it go. It does not rejoice about injustice. You know, there's a lot of injustice in the prayer that Pastor Nancy prayed. I did catch a glimpse of the, of the, of the news this weekend of the children that were getting shot. People going up and down alleys, shooting into groups of kids, jumping on trampolines or whatever they're jumping on. Heaven help people like that. And to forgive that is one of the most challenging things that there is. And yet the Bible says that we don't rejoice about injustices, but we rejoice whenever the truth prevails Uh, When truth wins out, hallelujah, love never gives up, not quitting, not giving up, never losing faith. It is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. Man, I think I've challenged everybody in here. If you haven't been challenged yet, then you are one loving person and you are a powerful, powerful Christian. But I think all of us have been challenged in some way or another. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way going on. It is not irritable and keeps no record of being wrong. Did we repeat that twice? I think we did. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. So what we have here is uh, the New Living Translation. You've got different versions throughout that you could examine some of the things that it says, but uh, we've got here the Amplified Classic and the Amplified, and we're just going to, I'm just going to take a moment and read those as we go, but the Amplified Classic says, love endures long and is patient and kind. Love is never envious nor boils over with jealousy, is not boastful or vain glorious, does not display itself haughtily, it is not conceited arrogant and inflated with pride. It is not rude, unmannerly, and does not act unbecomingly. Love, God's love in us, does not insist on its own rights or its own way. So here, here's, here's one of the things that Amplified Classic calls out. It's not self-seeking. It's not touchy. You know what kind of church we could have, brothers and sisters, if people weren't touchy as far as extra sensitive, overly sensitive. Touchy is overly sensitive. Where someone just comes up and is is graciously vibrant in their joy to say hello to you and somehow you're, you find something wrong with it. But love doesn't do that. Love appreciates someone that greets me. Love appreciates someone that says hello to you. Uh, Some people will never say hello. Even if you walk up to them right in their face and say, hi, how are you doing? They won't say hello. And I don't know why. A Christian should never be that way. You should have the joy of the Lord. You should have the kindness of of the, the fruit of the Spirit so that you could smile and say, thank you for saying hello, hello back at you, or something, but we can never. And, and the reason I bring that up, because it's, it's, a, it's a, a sensitive spot with me, because there are many Christians that I would go up and say hello to, and they would just blow you off and walk away. And you just go, you go, that's crazy. I simply said hello and they didn't even want to look. They didn't want to acknowledge. They didn't want to enjoy or share any happiness. 
My friends, that is, that's not acceptable. That's not love. All right, so it's not self-seeking. It's not overly occupied with itself. It's not touchy or fretful or resentful. Maybe something I did caused those people to be resentful of me. I don't even know. Most of the time you don't know what's going on with somebody. You can, and love will cut them some slack. Love will tell them, hey, or love will just say, you know, maybe they're going through something. My wife always has a gracious way of maybe something's not going well for them or, or they're just off somewhere. But, you know, we've, we've discussed some of these things in the past. But not self-seeking, touchy, fretful, or resentful. It takes no account of evil done to it. It pays no attention to a suffered wrong. That is Amplified Classic. It nails uh, issues that all of us need to address in our lives. And then the Amplified version is a more modern version of the Amplified Classic. I personally prefer Amplified Classic to the Amplified, but Amplified says love endures with patience and serenity. Love is kind and thoughtful. Hey, let me ask you a question. What if I was not thoughtful in the way I approached you? Some people will respond to that. They will respond as if you approached me wrong. Maybe I wasn't thoughtful. Love is kind and thoughtful and is not jealous or envious. Love does not brag and is not proud or arrogant. You can't mistake a bubbly personality for being pride or, or, uh, prideful or arrogant. Bubbly personalities are welcome. God bless your bubbly personality. We need more bubbly people around here because people with bubbly attitudes and, and uh, they smile and they're warm and it's fun to be around people like that because you know they don't have a ma- they're not mad at you, they're not angry with you, whatever the situation is. But we want you to be bubbly. We want you to be happy. We want you to smile. We want you to say hi to each other. We want you to greet each other. And man, if you want to slap somebody on the back, if you want to give somebody a hug or a sh- handshake, please feel free to do that. But make sure that the person that's receiving is willing to receive. But praise God for hugs. Of course, men to men and women to women, we're not crossing over. We're just going to keep our boundaries and things like that, of course. Amen. So, all right. So, um, love does not brag and is not proud or arrogant. It's not rude. It's not self-seeking. It's not provoked. Not overly sensitive. Overly sensitive. What do you mean by that? Somebody could say something really nice to you. What would you mean by that? Dude, they're just being nice to you. Receive it and smile and thank God that the love of God is in the house. Amen. Please don't judge somebody wrongly with your attitude when they're trying to be nice to you. Let people be nice to you because they may be genuinely motivated by the love of God. Why not cut them some slack? Why not believe that they are genuinely motivated by the love of God? Amen. All right, so it is not rude, it's not self-seeking, it's not provoked, nor overly sensitive and easily angered. It does not take into account a wrong endured. It does not rejoice at injustice. Man, there's a lot of injustice in the world today. There's a lot in our city. Some of us are genuinely trying to walk through and figure out where and what we should think or how we should, where do we, we line up or stand or, you know, not, not out of a, but, but looking for n- not rejoicing in injustice, being, having a caring attitude. But rejoices with the truth when right and truth prevail standing up for what's right, standing up for truth. Verse 7, love bears all things, regardless of what comes. <laughs> you say hi to somebody and you smile and they just blow you off. <sighs> hey, you just love them, walk away, love them, praise God, let them go, let it be on them. Believe all things, looking for the best in each other, hoping all things remaining steadfast during difficult times, enduring all things. 
without weakening. Praise God. Here comes Pastor Nancy. Amen. <laughs> she could call some things out. <laughs> no. I'm from. What's the main tactic of the enemy to get you offended? Yeah, absolutely. Because if you get offended, you can't hear the, the voice of God. Wow. And nothing's going to go right in your life. What's wrong with so much right now? Everybody is angry and offended. If you don't believe the way I believe, you are this, that, and the other thing, and you just don't. Yeah, I didn't even mention that. Between churches, well, doctrines. I mean, all sorts of stuff. I mean, think of everything going on around us. It's all about division and pointing fingers instead of the things that can unite us. And Christians should not have a part in that. We can be angry and sin not. Who are we angry at? The devil. It's the thief that comes to kill, steal, and destroy. You have to be careful that we're not turning our anger you know, those, those kids that are wrapped up in gangs that are doing the majority of the gun violence that's going on right now, those are lives. That's true. They're young people that God has a plan for their life. And whatever situation that they've come up in they have found themselves caught. Maybe they feel trapped. And so we have to be careful that, you know, I think one of the reasons that so many issues have never really been addressed or gotten to the heart of, because when a gang member kills another gang member, nobody cares. That's the biggest issue that we have going. There's more of that kind of violence and murder in our cities, in this country, than anything else. But nobody cares because it's a wasted life taking another wasted life and society is better if they're just not here. Come on, what is wrong with us that we would not pray for the salvation of those young people, that they would know that there's a better way? And if we're not going to stand up and pray, nobody out there certainly is going to. And we just have these cycles that, are, that just keep repeating and keep repeating and keep repeating. And because we have the love of God on the inside of us, we have the capability to change, to change the narrative just by, just by letting the love of God take a step back, take your emotions out of it. And I'm, hey, I'm an emotional person. I'm an opinionated person, so I'm talking to myself too. One of the reasons I turned off the news was because I was way too, I was way too um, moved to be angry or upset or what, I was losing my peace. And that, how are you gonna pray if you don't have any peace in your life, right? But we need to get back to the love of God uh, one of the, the Bible study book that we're studying right now is by Rick Renner, Life in the Combat Zone. And the Apostle John was the last surviving original apostle. And the emperor after Nero, I can't really say his name, Domitian or whatever, he was worse than Nero. Terrible persecution of the church. But tradition says that he he dropped John in a vat of boiling oil and not one thing. He didn't die. He wasn't scarred. He wasn't burned. There wasn't a mark on him. And a lot of people, and I would agree with this, 
He was the apostle of love. He walked in such tremendous love that the enemy could not touch him. We can be the change agents in our neighborhoods and in our cities if we'll just listen and have an attitude of love, but more importantly, pray. Pray. Reminds me of the scripture, keep yourself in the love of God and the enemy touches him not. I think it's Jude. Amen. But hey, I just want to f close with this, that in Jeremiah 29, and I didn't want to leave anybody hanging, but it says here in uh, verse 7, seek the peace of the city where, where I've caused you to be carried away captive and pray unto the Lord for it and for the peace thereof, for the peace thereof shall be your peace. This is the city of Babylon that God is telling through the prophet Jeremiah to pray for the city, for peace in the city. And then he goes on to say, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Uh, thoughts, I think thoughts, of, uh, thoughts so you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. In your, in your middle column it says, an expectation and a hope hope and expectation. Then it goes on, and you shall call upon me, and you shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you, and you shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all of your heart. So what a beautiful uh, passage of scripture that when you pray for the peace of your city, man, that's a blessing for you and I. And someone says, well, that was for, uh, for the, the children of Israel in the book of Jeremiah. We believe by faith that things we find in scripture that are good for people can be good for us. And so I take, you know, you say, well, you took that out of context. Well, I'm believing that for my city, and my heart is for my city. And if I will pray for the peace of the city, that God not only will bless our city, he'll bless us too. Can someone say amen to that? Amen. amen. All right, let's bow our heads. Let's say the salvation prayer together, and then we will uh, prepare to dismiss. Let's say, dear God in heaven. Dear God in heaven. I come to you in Jesus' name. I come to you in Jesus' name. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That He died on the cross for me. That He died on the cross for me. And was raised again from the dead. And was raised again from the dead. So that I could have eternal life. So that I could have eternal life. Jesus, come into my heart. Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Savior. Be my Savior. And be my Lord. And be my Lord. I ask you to forgive me of my sin. I ask you to forgive my sin. I receive forgiveness now. I receive forgiveness now. I thank you. Praise you for it. I thank and praise you for it. In Jesus' name, I pray. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, we'll give thanks for uh, the the evening offering, and then we will be dismissed. Father, we're thankful for the tithes and the gifts and the offerings that come into this church. Thank you for supplying all of our need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. We pray that your people would prosper and be in health even as their souls prosper. Father, we just thank you as they go into their world that you open up the windows of heaven and pour them out blessings that they don't have room enough to receive them all. And we thank you for supplying the need of our church. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 God bless you. and Have a good week. Amen. And keep praying that prayer. Speak it out over your neighborhood, over your neighbors. We can make a difference if we stay on it.